Okay, I'm going to attempt to do a review of a article that appeared in QST October 2017 uh, by a gentleman by the name of Elwood uh, Ham Whiskey Bravo Zero Oscar Edward Whiskey and he developed a hardware ham clock that is extremely easy to build, has tons of features, and he's constantly working on it. And if you don't have a copy of QST, just go to that right there, uh, clearskyinstitute.com, and look for the ham clock. And he has everything you need to build a ham clock, instructions. He also has uh, the coding uh, so you can download it. Uh, this is the processor. That right there is the processor. It's the feather from Adafruit. And I'm a real big fan of Adafruit. I followed Adafruit since they were a little two-person company, a husband and wife. Uh, she's an electrical engineer from MIT, and uh, he's a marketeer. And they have put together a just a fabulous uh, business. And they build almost everything uh, themselves. So everything is U.S. And this is the Ape. See if that's the right one there. Um, that's the processor. And you can see it's at a very reasonable price point. And the uh, if you want to do your own programming, which Elwood uh, does give you, it gives you the, the program. You can get a tutorial on Adafruit on how to use the Arduino IDE interface uh, to program the uh, Adafruit Feather, which is uh, uh, I did on the second one. The first one that I built uh, I bought the uh, processor from Elwood and he sends it to you pre-programmed which is uh, if you're not into the uh, programming and uh, don't, don't want to mess with the uploading that's definitely the way to go um, it just you get it and you start putting it together so I'll show you the first one that I built which is, this is the 6-inch version. And this one requires a device driver uh, for a screen driver. And so that adds to the uh, complexity and the, and the wiring uh, quite a bit. I'll show you a 9-inch version here in a second. But this is the, the first one uh, that I built. And you can see it contains a lot of information. and. I'd recommend reading the article to fully uh, know what uh, this thing is capable of doing. And here's the <laughs> my my first uh, attempt. And for me, the two things that uh, keep me alive is duct tape and Velcro. Uh, so this is actually Velcroed on, so I can remove it. Uh, but there's the feather, and there this is a temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor uh, that he added on just uh, so you could have that information if you wanted it. And this is this big board is actually the driver board for the screen. He also added a uh, screen dimming feature for uh, dimming the screen down automatically. And I actually preferred my uh, full uh, intensity all the time. So in the second one, I didn't build that into it. Now, my second one 
was this. Uh, this is the 9 inch version and uh, unfortunately I fried it yesterday. Uh, this requires a very stable power supply which Adafruit has one that is a UL approved uh, 5 volt 4 amp supply that works very well with this display and uh, unfortunately I plugged in by accident 12 volt 5 amp <laughs> supply that I had laying around lots of smoke and fire and the reason I'm showing you this is that if you order it the way that uh, uh, Elwood has listed, you'll get this, these header pins and uh, you either have to use a female um, uh, female header and I just didn't want uh, to mess with that because I uh, knew that this was going to be a permanent uh, solution for me so I called the, or actually emailed the company when I ordered the second one and uh, had them do it without the header pins so it's uh, to me it's it just cleaned up everything it makes it look a lot better and the biggest problem is of course mounting the board here and in the center is about the the best place to mount it without covering over uh, a lot of uh, surface mounted components and I use coax tape uh, to, to mount it and that, that worked out really really well uh, it's just uh, just a few wires and here's the temperature humidity sensor I'm actually building it for a friend so that uh, he can bend these wires and position the temperature humidity sensor so that it uh, doesn't get in the way of anything and the one thing I found on uh, Elwood's work is that like I say he did a, just a fabulous job but there's it's it has to be very precise so I bought a bunch of these uh, pens for touchscreen and so this is the one I built for my friend and by the way his his call sign is not in seven triple x but uh this and forgive me but uh elwood goes into a lot more description of what each of these boxes will do i just mainly want to show you uh that by clicking anywhere in the box it changes the display so you can get all kinds of different things and uh this one is actually a composite of the sun with sunspots and a bunch of other stuff that I don't understand. But you can also do, it's a little slow on the updating, but it's not bad. I'm trying to get through to the pressure and temperature. Okay, there's the temperature setting. There's the humidity and then the pressure and then of course then it cycles around now the one of the other things he did that's really cool is he added a bunch of beacons and the, you can just turn them off by pressing right in there but doing it with a finger is really really hard so this pin works out real well so i'll turn the beacons back on it shows you the beacons and what frequency they're on, whether they're transmitting at the time, that type of thing. Then if you're looking for information on a contact, let's say one in you know, Spain, uh, this portion gives you all the information about them, latitude, longitude, the, uh, uh, their date and time, and then the uh, Oh, what is that? I don't even know what that is. Anyway, uh, again, read Elwood's uh, description. He also, he has an RSS feed that uh, 
you can turn on and off. But the hardest part is getting your location set up. And I found that trying to do it with your finger was really hard and trying to do it from here was hard. But uh, Elwood showed me a little trick of using a browser. Uh, you get the IP address and you can actually uh, send directly to the device the coordinates that, uh, that you want to uh, for your location and it even has a help function so it's for a small processor I just can't say enough of what Elwood did with this. The biggest problem that people are uh, complaining about is is a frame uh, because it's kind of a non-standard. I elected to do a uh, 3D print and uh, but my printer wouldn't print it large enough so I ended up having to split it there and there and I use PLA for those of you that do have a 3D printer you probably have run into trying to get the PLA to adhere well there's I found on, by doing some research that this stuff methylene chloride it it's just like acetone on ABS. It uh, dissolves it and then you put the two pieces together and uh, within just a few minutes you've got a, a good strong bond. And just real quickly, this is, this is the processor. So check out, uh, check out uh, Elwood's article and I think you'll want to build one.